it's absolutely critical for the people of Wigan that we get a Labour victory, because otherwise, five more years of these savage Tory cuts, cutting all the services, putting people into insecure work, never sure whether they've got a zero hours contract or no job at all. We've got to get back to the standards the trade union movement and the labor movement set over the generations and fought hard for. Unless we get a labor victory, the position of people in Britain and people in Wigan is absolutely dire. That's why we need to re-elect Lisa Mandy with a thumping majority to fight for us in Parliament, just as she's done so well over the last five years as a real socialist standard bearer, standing up for the principles of social justice, equality, democracy and liberty for all. I'm very proud to have led a campaign that means the lowest paid workers at Wigan Council now receive the living wage. It may not seem a lot, but in a borough where nearly one in four families live in poverty, it can mean the difference between a child having breakfast before it goes to school and not. I couldn't have done it without the support of my fellow Labour councillors and particularly the backing of our MP Lisa Nandy. And I believe that this is what we do as Labour. We stand up for those people that need us the most and we should be helping those people that have the least. I want to live in, in a more equal society and I want to live in a fairer Britain. And the only way we're going to get there is by voting Labour on May the 7th and voting for Lisa Nandy. And that's why it's so important that we do well in Wigan, send a clear message to this government and make sure that we can implement our agenda for women, whether that's by increasing the minimum wage, scrapping the bedroom tax, 25 hours free childcare, breakfast school clubs, after school clubs, all these things that we are going to do for the women across the country. Let's get Lisa and Andy back here to vote for it. The thing about Labour is it's not just a party, it's a movement. And it's made up of hundreds of thousands of activists in the party, the trade union movement, working people, the people the party was set up for really, uh, to go out there and fight for a different sort of society. And it's not a society run as a racket for a tiny group of people at the top. It's a society run in the interests of people who work hard every day, the, the wealth creators who, who keep society ticking, whether it be dinner ladies, supermarket workers, office workers, bin collectors, the pillars of our, every society. And that's why we've got to win this election, because those are the people at the moment who are suffering. And they're suffering because of a crisis they have absolutely nothing to do with. The last thing Labour needs to be doing, and candidates, is to look at seats where it looks like a safe seat and just take them for granted. Because that is a way of allowing politics to, to fester and to rot, where people are neglected, they're taken for granted, not listened to properly. Every seat should be treated as though it's a marginal, and it should be treated, uh, the voters there should be treated accordingly, that we're, you know, you, we're desperate to hear from you. We want to listen to your concerns. We want to go out back to Westminster, not be in some bubble where we ignore people like you, but we're, we're, we're your champions, we're fighting for you. We're your voice in Parliament. So, you know, in a place like Wigan, it's easy for activists to go, oh, you know, hang on a minute, we're going to win this seat, we'll walk it, whatever happens. But I think that was a recipe for disaster. This is a time, you know, with the UKIP insurgency, with voters being lost to the Green Party, where you can't take voters for granted now more than ever, almost. And that means uh, really up in our ante, being a, a ground army uh, that goes out and, and really makes sure we don't just talk to people, we listen to them as well. We're a movement after all, we're not just a party. Good. Now, I'm particularly proud though um, to be back in Lisa Nandy, and I know all of you, um, people, people in Wigan, part of that party, are proud that they'll be marching out throughout the streets in the next few months to fight for Lisa, because I think Lisa understands that the party is a movement, that it's there to champion the interests of people who are otherwise ignored, who don't have a voice. She's rooted in her community. She's a fighter for her community and her constituency. Um, and she's someone with principles uh, who understands that Labour's not this kind of triangulating machine, this mess, this, you know, kind of full of spin. She speaks like a human being, because she is, and like maybe some other politicians, uh, she's rooted. Um, and, you know, what we desperately need is, if only the Labour Party had more politicians like, like Lisa Nandy. Uh, and it's a shame we don't. And I think, 
you know, you'll be going out there knowing you're not just fighting for a Labour government, which you are. You're not just fighting to get the Tories, but you're fighting for an MP uh, who will fight for all the principles and beliefs that you join the Labour Party in order to fight for. So, you know, Lisa, that day when, on in May, when you're there, Lisa re-elected will be a very, very special moment and there'll be a lot of people whooping, not just in Wigan, but all over Britain as well. Charities across Wigan work with some of the most vulnerable people and it seems so unfair that the government cuts have hit the charitable sector so hard. So we are all really struggling to do our best for people who are hardest hit. That's why it's so important to get Lisa re-elected because she has been enormously helpful to our charity and many of the other charities in Wigan and she's there fighting for people whose voices are not heard. The first introduction to Wigan was Orwell, the road to Wigan Pier and, uh, and then of course uh, during the pitch strike I went to Lancashire several times in 1984 it's just possible that I might have been there earlier when we had the 1974 strike, which we won. So I've, I've done the area, I've spoken, I've been at Wigan Town Hall. And I think the last occasion would be for Ian McCartney yeah. in the Wigan Town Hall. It was a, an impressive town hall, as I remember. And... Uh, and a very successful meeting. Well, I think the important thing is that you're saying to the other constituencies near and far that not only is it a big majority, but the people just turn out in droves and they have to do it. They have to deliver on the day. And uh, sadly, in a lot of these areas, people tend to think, well, it's in the bag. But it isn't. You have to vote. And that's why I'm actually a supporter of compulsory voting. Not that uh, many, too many people believe in it, but uh, I believe in the Australian system. I think people have got to concentrate the mind in Wigan, Bolsover, or anywhere else on the fact that we are not a presidential system. It is not about three or four leaders. It is about the policies. And that's why when we talk about getting rid of the bedroom tax, we're not only getting rid of Cameron, we're getting rid of Tories in Wigan, Bolsover and anywhere else. We have 650 separate contests. Ed Miliband will be fighting in Doncaster. Lisa Nandy will be in Wigan. Dennis Skinner will be in Bolsover. That's our system. And too many people now, especially in the media, think it's all about a presidential system. Well, it ain't. That's why this farce that we're getting now about TV debates has arisen because principally the media want to concentrate on one individual. They always do. It's called the ace in the hole. That's how journalists work. But our system's not like that. Our system is 650 different contests. Now, as I say, the last time I was there was when Ian McCartney uh, was the local MP. Now it's Lisa Nandy. And from the moment she walked through the doors of the House of Parliament, I thought she was probably going to be significant before the end of the Parliament. There's no doubt I've been proved right. Uh, I said the same about Yvette Cooper in 1997. Uh, so yes, Lisa Nandy fights for people in Wigan. She does it not only in the constituency, but she does it down in Parliament. And everybody knows that she's got a distinctive voice from those backbenchers, just as it is when she's on the front bench. So. Lee's and Andy's going places, and Lee's and Andy deserves your vote, all of you, on May the 7th.